Hey, so I'm back with a whole other uh, discussion on two of the movies that I recommended last time that I hadn't actually seen yet. So I thought I owed you guys a little bit further discussion of uh, some of the movies that I had discussed. Uh, it's just two this time, so hopefully we can get through them with a further amount of detail. Okay, first we're going to talk about uh, Bruce Lee's Return of the Dragon. Now this uh, actually came out just before Game of Death. The theme is not quite as good, but it does have a very nice opening title sequence. Um, it does feature some of the best fight choreography I've seen in a long time, and it is all Bruce Lee. So in my opinion, this should really be counted as the very last of the true Bruce Lee movies. Uh, it is not one that I had actually really even heard about. I had heard more of Game of Death simply because of the fight scene with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, but this one features the entirety of the fight with Chuck Norris, as well as many fights that uh, he choreographed with other martial artists. Uh, and uh, it's just generally, I think, a better movie on the whole uh, for Bruce Lee fans. Um, it doesn't have any special features, really, other than languages like subtitles and things like that. But uh, it is still an excellent movie. And I think that uh, if you give it a chance, uh, you'll enjoy it even more than um, possibly uh, Fist of Fury or, uh, or maybe The Chinese Connection if... Uh, if you're really, really excited about uh, any of those two movies. I think it's actually better than uh, The Chinese Connection, but that's me. Okay, next we're going back to The Magnificent Seven. Now, as I said before, this was based on The Seven Samurai. Uh, that is the premise of the movie. However, of course, it does not include uh, sword fighting or uh, Japanese warriors of any kind. But <clears throat> the premise does remain the same. Seven warriors are sought out to help the town. Now, it's interesting because just as with uh, the bare bones copy of The Great Escape, this also came with documentaries uh, detailing uh, the production efforts of the cast and crew. And um, one of the things I actually found interesting was that they shot entirely in Mexico and had virtually... <coughs> Excuse me. They had virtually no Mexican cast members, um, except for a few of the extras and such playing the actual Mexicans. But the lead villain, I believe, is an American. Uh, one of the Magnificent Seven, who's supposed to be uh, Mexican, is in fact a German. Uh, and then I think I, I think Yul Brynner's also German, but you might be able to correct me on that. Um, Anyway, so uh, this movie is excellent. It features uh, a great cast, Charles Bronson, Robert Vaughn, who you may know more as the man from Uncle. Charles Bronson, of course, was in the uh, Death Wish series of uh, action films, among others. I think um, Charles Bronson was also in The Dirty Dozen. Uh, so obviously fans of war movies will know Charles Bronson very well. Um, and it's just generally a quality pick as it goes. Unfortunately, it is pointed out in the documentary that it was the death knell on the Western as a film uh, when they produced it. And um, that shortly thereafter it turned into spaghetti Westerns and things. So, in general, I think that it's best if you watch this, if you're a fan of Westerns, and realize that it's one of the last Westerns ever made. Um, my father was a fan of Westerns. I am not actually as a person, uh, but I do like uh, some of the best ones that have come out in the last few years. Uh, Open Range was okay, a little bit slow paced uh, in between the fight scenes, and I thought the music didn't suit it. Um, and for some reason, the theater that I went to was packed with elderly people who had the heavy perfume on, you know, and one old lady was as she was walking out very slowly. All she could say was, "Well, I thought it was a lovely picture." Now you compare that with Silverado, starring Kevin Klein, Danny Glover, and Kevin Costner, among others. Uh, and frankly, Silverado is the best western I've seen in the last produced in the last 20 years easily. And they produced a number of westerns. Uh, 
such as uh, Tombstone and um, The Quick and the Dead. But I found that Silverado just had the right touch of uh, the little bit of camp, the little bit of humor, and uh, the sense of character development and complexity. Because each person has their own story. You have the two brothers that are the real uh, key figures in the story. Then you have Danny Glover, who is, um, I believe, a Civil War veteran who uh, learned how to shoot a rifle and uh, is on his way back home. Then you have uh, Kevin Klein's character, who's a bit of a drunk, who's kind of fallen by the wayside in terms of his, uh, his career as a cowboy. And um, it, it, you, you just have to watch it because uh, the story itself is wrapped up and involving and really exciting. It has almost non-stop action from beginning to end. There's always dialogue. There's a little bit of a love story for people who enjoy romances. And I think that uh, as Westerns go, it's one of the best ones that they've produced for a long time. And of course, it's Kevin Costner back before he got serious about acting and wanted to do stuff like Waterworld and The Postman and all that junk. Um, it's pre-Field of Dreams. So, no righty, no directy, just acty. So, uh, you can check that out if you really enjoyed The Magnificent Seven as a Western, because there it's just four guys instead of seven, and um, in the end, the only ones you're really rooting for in The Magnificent Seven are around four of them. Um, <clears throat> not especially, uh, you know, a particular, you know, like half of them you're only really rooting for. So, I don't know. It, it's just a matter of the character development. Like, one is a bit of a scaredy cat, another one is really just in it for money. So, uh, again, it shows that while they're looking for good men to defend this village, you can't always find good men. Good men are hard to find. The story is old as Sodom and Gomorrah, if you ever read that, uh, with uh, Lot trying to find at least one good person in each of the five boroughs of the city, of uh, two of which were Sodom and Gomorrah. So, uh, the whole concept of trying to find good people, trying to defend innocent people, uh, and, uh, you know, trying to just, you know, scare away guys that want to exploit these people, who are really just simple farmers, they don't have anything else. It really is something uh, to see, because it speaks to the time of the Cold War, and uh, of that era when we felt that we had to come in and defend things. The Mexican government actually stipulated, though, that the, um, that the seven warriors could not just be sought out to defend their village, but that the village had to be seeking to defend itself. So Mexico actually took a stand for itself, um, and the village people actually wanted to make a stand for themselves, and the warriors said, uh, if you guys really want to get your money's worth, you know, hire some guns, you know, instead of buying guns, you know, hire some gunmen, uh, because gunmen are cheaper by comparison. You know, you put them up for a few nights, give them some food, and, uh, you know, you're good. So, if you guys can check that out, and check out Return of the Dragon, I think it's as good a movie as Fist of Fury and the Chinese Connection. Um, also, of course, check out other Bruce Lee films if you can. There are only a few really made. He only made around three or four. Game of Death, uh, Return of the Dragon, Fist of Fury, also known as The Big Boss, and The Chinese Connection. Uh, if you can check those out, do so. If you can check out other westerns or war movies starring Steve McQueen and uh, Charles Bronson, of course, I recommend that. The Dirty Dozen, The Great Escape, they're all good. Uh, thanks. Have a good one. Goodbye.